Did you ever think about why your world reflects how you think? You are about to learn the deep axiom, as within, so without. This old saying means that your thoughts and feelings affect the outside world. You'll learn about yourself and how your thoughts affect your life on this trip. You will understand the law of correspondence, discover how to move with the world, and learn how being thankful can change your life. Ready to tap into the power that lies dormant within? Let's start. Chapter 1. How the phrase came to be. You may not know that the term, as within, so without, comes from the old hermetic teachings, which are linked to alchemy and metaphysics. This principle, which is hidden within the seven hermetic principles, is the foundation of human growth and development. What does this mean then? The phrase, as within, so without, means that our ideas, feelings and opinions have a direct effect on the outside world. There is a message about how we are linked to everything else in the world. Understanding this idea isn't easy, but it's necessary if you want to go deeper into your own self-awareness. The phrase reminds people of the microcosm-macrocosm comparison, which is the idea that small systems can be seen as mirror images of bigger systems. So, knowing yourself on the inside can help you understand the outside world and the other way around. As an active player in the world, you are not just a passive viewer. Your inner state is constantly making your reality. This idea could give you strength. It means that you have the power to change your life by changing your inner world. But you shouldn't blame yourself for everything that happens. Instead, you should know what part you play in your events and be responsible for your mental and emotional states. Chapter 2. Getting to know your inner self. How do you get to know this inner self that has so much power over your life? It starts with thinking about yourself. You have to go deep within and peel back the layers of self-perception and so on that get in the way of our real selves. As you slowly peel back these layers, you will reveal your true self, including your deepest fears, wants, strengths and flaws. It's not easy to figure out who you are on the inside. It's more like putting together a puzzle where each piece represents a different part of your personality, beliefs, values and experiences. You do not have to find all the pieces at once, but you need to keep looking and wait. Don't forget that it's not a race, but a trip to find yourself. Getting to know yourself is important because your outer reality comes from your inner world. As within, so without, isn't just a mysterious saying. It's a deep truth about how your inner state affects the things going on around you. If you don't like the latter, there's probably something wrong within you. Chapter 3. The link between your thoughts and the real world. Every thought that goes through your mind has the power to change your world. It's a strong statement, but it comes from the ancient hermetic principle of as within, so without. This principle says that the small world inside you mirrors the big world outside. To put it more simply, your inner ideas and feelings can have a direct effect on the outside world. Now, you might not believe it. After all, how can a thought change the real world? But think about this. Doesn't your view determine your reality? A happy mood makes you see the world around you as brighter, which you have probably noticed. However, when you're not in a good mood, everything goes wrong. It's not a coincidence. Your ideas are making your world what it is. But it's not just how you see things. What you think also affects what you do. If you always think you can't do something, you won't try new things or take advantage of chances. In turn, this limits your experiences and makes it seem like you can't do anything. However, if you believe in your skills, you will be willing to take chances, learn, grow and make your dreams come true. In Chapter 4, we look at the Law of Correspondence. Let us learn more about the Law of Correspondence, 
a basic principle that sheds more light on the meaning of as within, so without. This universal law says that your ideas, feelings and beliefs affect your outside situations. To put it simply, what's going on inside you shows up in the outside world. You might be interested in how this law works. It's not magic, it's a deep understanding of how everything in the world works. Your thoughts, which are full of feeling and faith, send out energy. The universe is like a garden where these vibes can grow. If you give your thoughts force, they grow and show up in your life. Picture your life as a mirror. Do you like what you see when you look at it? You can change it if it's not true. The things that you think and feel are not fixed. They can change. You have the power to choose to feel good feelings and get rid of bad ones. If you change your inner world, your outer world will also change. In line with this concept, you should take charge of your life. You don't have to blame yourself for your problems. You just have to realize that you can change your world. For those who understand this, you are no longer a silent receiver, but a maker. It can change your life to understand and use the law of correspondence. It's a way to learn about yourself and gain power. Remember, within, so without, as your life reflects your inner world. Create a beautiful inner world and watch as your reality changes as you nurture your ideas, feelings and beliefs. Chapter 5. How our beliefs shape the world around us. How do the things you believe affect the world around you? It's not something you think about every day, but it has a big impact on the world around you. You see, your beliefs aren't just private thoughts that live so deep within you. They're strong, changing things that affect how you deal with the outside world and create the reality you live in. Your ideas are the direction of this life play. You are not a passive observer. The things you believe are like screens that shape how you see the world. They change the way you see things, how you respond, and the choices you make. In this way, they have a big effect on what you draw, what you push away, and what your outside world looks like. Take a look at this. If you think the world is hostile, you will probably see dangers where there are none, bring about war, and turn down chances for peace. If, on the other hand, you think the world is full and helpful, you're more likely to see chances, attract good things, and build relationships where everyone gets along. Not some magical nonsense. It's a psychological concept based on cognitive biases and self-fulfilling predictions. Your views may create a positive feedback loop where they get stronger as you connect with and experience things. Knowing this, it's important to take a close look at your views. Are they helping you or getting in the way? Are they based on facts or false beliefs? Because, as you know, what you see outside is a mirror of what you see within. You can change your world by changing the way you think about it. Chapter 6. The Power of Your Thoughts So, don't the goals you set for yourself affect what you believe and how you see the world? In this situation, you can't say enough about how powerful intention is. Intention is like an inner map that guides your thoughts, actions, and the energy you send out into the world. Think of your plans as seeds. You will grow hatred, anger, or fear in your life if you plant seeds of those things. Sow seeds of optimism, kindness, and courage on the other hand and you will harvest a life full of power, connection, and growth. Like a good plant, the world gives back what you put into it. Your goals aren't just wishful thinking. They're a strong force that shapes your world and determines what you do. You are always giving signals to the universe, and these signals have an effect on how you see and connect with the world. Setting goals doesn't mean you have control over every result. Instead, it means lining up your deeds with what you believe in your heart. Being aware of the energy you want to bring into your life and the world is what it means. 
Making these kinds of choices can have big effects on your life. Intention has the power to change things. It's a way to grow as a person, to bring about change, and to find your true north. So pay attention to the goals you set. They are more than just thoughts. They are the blueprint for your world, within and without. Chapter 7. How to get to the subconscious mind. You can't skip this important step on your path to self-discovery, going into your subconscious mind. Your views, memories and events are stored in your subconscious as you sleep. It acts as a vast ocean below the surface that affects your conscious mind, frequently without your knowledge. You might be wondering why it's so important to understand the subconscious mind. The truth is that it has a huge effect on your world, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Your events take shape in your subconscious mind, which also changes how you see the world. It runs your personal world and determines what you do by the ideas and assumptions it holds. That your inner mind works without your awareness is interesting, don't you think? Something that works all the time, even when you're asleep. It takes in your events, sorts them through your beliefs, and stores them in your mind. This shapes how you respond to the world around you. But how do you get into your subconscious? This can be done through self-reflection, being aware, and methods such as meditation and hypnosis. Some of these activities can help you connect with your subconscious and find its secret riches. They can also help you see the beliefs that might be stopping you from reaching your goals. In the end, getting to know your mind is about knowing who you are at your core. As the saying goes, as within, so without. As you go deeper into your mind, you will realize how much it affects your world. Moving on, we will talk about how feelings work with the subconscious mind and how they affect creation. Chapter 8. The Part Emotions Play in Making Things Happen Let us now talk about how important your feelings are to the process of expression. Creating your world isn't just about thinking good thoughts or picturing what you want. Your feelings are what make it happen. They give your thoughts the power to become real because they are full of energy. Think of your feelings as a guide that points you in the direction of the reality you want. You are in line with what you want to bring into your life when you feel good. On the other hand, when you feel bad emotions, you move away from them. This is an easy but important idea that many people on their path to manifestation miss. But let's go a little further. Your feelings do more than just react. They also take action. You can think of them as the link between the non-physical world of ideas and the real world. As you experience an emotion, you are basically telling the world what you want to bring into your life. What do we learn from this? You have to choose your feelings carefully if you want to manifest. There's more to it than making the right vision board or mantras. You have to feel the happiness, excitement or peace that goes with what you want. The magic of creation is not just in what you think, but also in how you feel. In short, the saying goes, as within, so without. Not only about thinking, but also about how you feel. Mastering your feelings is the key to making your dreams come true. Be aware that the world is always reacting to how you feel, so choose an emotion that is good for you. Chapter 9 Why Being Self-Aware is Important Self-Awareness Knowing how you feel is only half the battle. To really learn the art of creation, you must also become deeply self-aware. Self-awareness isn't just being aware of your feelings, it's also knowing why you feel the way you do and how those feelings affect what you do. It involves breaking down your thinking, looking at what you believe and closely watching how you act. Take a look at this. The outside world reflects the inside world. If you don't know how your mind works, you'll probably create a world that is chaotic, uncertain 
and not what you want. On the other hand, if you are in touch with your inner self, you can change your world to match what you want. You are not powerless over outside events. Instead, you have the power to plan your life. Knowing yourself better also helps you find and get rid of your limited ideas. You are often prevented from reaching your full potential by these deeply embedded beliefs as a result. By learning more about yourself, you can bring these ideas to the surface, question them, and replace them with ones that make you feel better. There is more to life than just responding to it. You are creating it. Self-awareness is basically a strong way to bring things into your life. The guide will help you find your dream life. It's what will help you reach your full ability. Between the worlds within and without, it is the link. So, work on self-awareness through self-reflection and focus. Keep in mind that what occurs within occurs outside. Chapter 10 is about how energy and vibration affect things. You are basically setting the tone for what you bring into your life when you use the power of energy and vibe. The unique vibrational pattern you give off is like a light that attracts things, people and situations that match its frequency. So, think about what this means for a moment. Everyone has heard the saying, like attracts like, right? That's how the law of attraction works then. It's not enough for you to just follow this law. You have to follow it too. The things you think, feel and do give off energy that moves at different speeds. Then, events with similar energy are drawn to these frequencies. Now, if you give off good, high-frequency energy, good things are more likely to come into your life. If you are full of negative, on the other hand, your energy may bring you more of the same. But here's the cool part. You can change your energy and, by extension, your events. How well you understand and control your energy state is the key. Your thoughts, feelings and deeds can change your vibration, so it's not something mysterious or out of your control. Change your attitude and the things you draw by focusing on these areas. You need to understand the as-within, so-without concept. What you hold within, you show without. Chapter 11 Bringing Wealth and Abundance into Your Life so you want to bring more wealth and success into your life. A lot of people want it, but it can be hard to get. Why does that happen? The answer lies in the old saying, as within, so without, which means that the outside world reflects what's going on inside you. If you're not having the wealth you want, it's likely because your conscious goals are not matching up with your subconscious views. People may want to be wealthy, but if they deeply think that money is bad or that they don't deserve it, they create an energy block that stops wealth from coming to them. Don't get the wrong idea. This doesn't mean you're to blame for your money problems. It's not about who is at fault. It's about learning how to use the power of your mind to get what you want. That's where the real magic of manifestation takes place. You can start by being aware of what you think about money and success. Do they mean something good or bad? Do they make you stronger or weaker? Then you can start to change those ideas, switching out the negative for the positive and the limiting for the powerful ones. Don't forget that it's a process, not a single event. But as you work on yourself, things in your outside world will start to change. You will see chances where you once saw problems. You will bring wealth to places where there was once poverty. This is the power of as within, so without. Let's learn more about this idea by focusing on the next step, healing and changing through inner work. Chapter 12. Doing inner work to heal and change. By doing inner work, you will discover that it is a strong way to heal and change your life. As you face and get over your inner issues, fears and past traumas, you grow as a person and become self-masterful. It's not always easy to go through this process, but it's important for personal growth and development. You aren't just getting better physically or emotionally. The work you do on yourself goes deeper. 
It helps you figure out the ways you think and act that are holding you back and change them. A lot of the time, these habits come from things that happened in the past and affect how you live your life now. But how do you do this? Being self-aware is the first step. Take a moment to recognize your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Think about them, figure out where they came from and what effect they had, and then face them. The point of this conversation is not to find fault or guilt, but to understand. It's about being okay with your flaws and mistakes and learning from them. The next step is change. Now that you know what your thought habits are, you can change them. This won't change overnight. It will take time and work. You need to change your bad thoughts into positive ones, your fear into courage, and your doubt into self-belief. You will see changes in your mood, behavior, and life in general over time. Don't forget that inner work is an ongoing process. It's a trip, not a goal. It's about developing a connection with yourself, and as you heal and change within, you'll see changes without. Your work goes well, your relationships get better, and you feel more at ease. This gets you ready for the next step in your journey, which is to find unity and balance. Chapter 13. Finding Peace and Balance As you go on this trip, you will see that the world around you becomes more harmonious as you work on your own. It's as if the world vibrates in reaction to your consciousness, which acts as a tuning fork. The more balanced you are on the inside, the more balanced you will think your outside world is. Realizing this isn't just an intellectual thought, it's a useful tool for getting through life. Think about the Zen idea of balance. It's not about getting rid of problems, it's about finding better ways to deal with them. You will deal with stresses more successfully when your mind and emotions are in order. You will answer to life's difficulties instead of reacting to them, which will lead to better results. Harmony, on the other hand, entails creating unity between your thoughts, feelings and actions, so it goes beyond simply keeping balance. These things will make you feel peaceful and happy when they are all working together. You will become more honest and driven, which will make the way you deal with others better. Getting balance and unity isn't a one-time thing, though. It's an ongoing process that needs self-care and awareness. It's about being able to tell when you're off balance and making changes to fix it. It's about having a good relationship with yourself, accepting your flaws and trying to get better. It is possible for this journey of balance and peace to change you. It aligns you with the global rule of as within, so without, which says that the outside world reflects how you feel inside. As you move on to the next part, think about how relationships play a part in this process of reflection. Chapter 14. What Relationships Did For Me Your relationships also act as strong mirrors, reflecting your inner state and assisting you on your path to balance and unity. They give you feedback that changes over time, which helps you understand your feelings, thoughts and actions. If you don't feel valued, for example, think about whether you are valuing other people. Are you really listening to the people around you if you feel like you're not being heard? It's not always easy to see these images. Realizing that your outside world shows what's going on inside, you can be upsetting. But it's an important step toward growth and knowledge. You can't change something you don't see. You can break these habits once you know what they are. You are not a slave of your circumstances. You are in charge of your life. Of course, not every friendship shows every part of you. Some show your good points and others your bad points. Some may serve as reflections of aspects of yourself that you are proud of, while others may reflect aspects of yourself that you would rather conceal. But each one gives you a different view and a chance to learn more about yourself. Relationships aren't just about connecting with other people. They're also about getting to know yourself. They can help you learn more about yourself and find balance and unity within yourself. They give you a chance to change, grow, and become the best version of yourself. 
When you think about as within, so without, keep in mind that these ties are like images. Take what you can from them, help them grow, and love them. As you do this, you will be better prepared to take personal responsibility, which is a key step toward positive change and self-empowerment. Taking Personal Responsibility, Chapter 15 As you enjoy how your relationships have changed you, it's important to remember that you are the most important person in creating your inner and outer worlds. Whenever you connect with someone, make a choice, or do something, it changes not only your immediate surroundings, but also how you feel about yourself. You don't have to blame yourself for everything that goes wrong in your life in order to take personal responsibility. Instead, it's about realizing that you have the power to change things, to shape your experiences, and to make the world the way you want it to be. It involves realizing that you are not just a passive viewer of your life, but an involved one. As you become more aware of how your inner state affects your outer world, you will fully understand what it means to say, as within, so without. Your thoughts, feelings and beliefs are like a mirror, reflecting back to you what you see. It is within your power to alter what you see if you are upset with it. But keep in mind that change doesn't happen quickly. It takes time, dedication and most of all, personal responsibility. To get better at yourself, you often have to deal with problems and failures. Don't run away from these problems. Instead, welcome them. These things give you chances to grow, think about yourself, and become a better person. Personal duty is the first thing that you need to do to live a better life. It can help you reach your full potential, change your connections, and eventually shape your inner and outer worlds, so without, as within. Chapter 16. Getting Past Limiting Beliefs You have to question the bad stories you tell yourself if you want to get rid of limiting ideas. You are writing your own life story, and you need to change the parts that are stopping you. Think about how your past experiences have shaped the views you hold today. A person who has failed before may think they will fail again, but that's not always the case. What happened in the past doesn't have to happen again. You need to question this story, make sure it's true, and reframe it in a way that makes you feel better. You might not have failed after all if you used your past mistakes as stepping stones to success. How would that change the way you look at things? You can change your limiting views into powerful ones by changing how you think about your past. Next, be aware of how strong your thoughts are. What you say to yourself shapes your world. When you keep telling yourself, I can't, you set yourself up to fail before you even start. Instead, think about what you can do. It's not a sign of fantasy. It's a powerful way to change the way your brain works so that you can be successful. Last but not least, understand that change takes time and patience. It takes time to learn about yourself, accept yourself, and improve yourself as you work to get rid of limiting ideas. Chapter 17. Think about what you want and say positive things to yourself. Continuing with the idea of getting rid of limiting beliefs, Let's talk about the power of mantras and visualization, which you can use to change your world and the way you talk to yourself. Making interesting and clear pictures in your thoughts is what visualization is all about. You have to be able to see the success or result you want before it happens. This isn't just thinking, it's a practice of seeing the future you want to happen. On the other hand, Affirmations are strong, positive words that can change the way you think and feel about yourself. They keep you motivated to be the positive person you want to be, like your own personal cheerleaders. If you use affirmations regularly, they can change the way you think, which can have a huge effect on how you act and behave. You may be wondering why it's important to visualize and say mantras. The catch is that both can help you match your inner world thoughts, beliefs and feelings with your outer world 
actions, situations, and events. By picturing the future you want and telling yourself good things, you are training your inner mind, which then changes your reality. Think about this. Your mind is like a yard. If you don't take care of it, weeds, bad thoughts, will grow on it. You will grow a garden of success and happiness if you take good care of it, planting seeds of good thoughts and watering them with words and visualization. But these tools aren't just useful for making the future better. They're also great for developing a happy attitude, which is what we'll talk about next. Chapter 18. How to keep a positive attitude. Some people are naturally positive, but you can also learn to be positive. The first step is to choose to be positive instead of negative. This change in how you see things is the first very important step, like setting a seed. After making that choice, you are already on your way to getting good things from having a happy attitude. Developing this way of thinking needs regular brain exercise. Don't expect to maintain a good attitude without constant effort, just as you wouldn't expect to run a race without training. You will make progress if you think positively every day, consciously push away negative thoughts, and choose to focus on good things that will happen. As the saying goes, as within, so without. This means that what you see outside of you is a mirror of how you feel inside. Your events will reflect the sadness you carry within yourself. Instead, work on making your inner world a good place, and you will start to see it show up in your outer world. It is important to know that this is not about avoiding problems or holding back bad feelings. The idea is to deal with these problems in a good way. It's about seeing failures as chances to learn and grow, problems as puzzles to be solved, and the unknown parts of life with courage and hope. Basically, having a positive attitude means changing your point of view, consistently being positive, and realizing how powerful, as within, so without, really is. It takes work, but the benefits are well worth it. Chapter 19. Getting in sync with the flow of the universe. Why not get in sync with the flow of the world and let its natural pace guide your actions, thoughts and life? The world is not random. It has rhythms and patterns that show that there is a higher order. Most of the time, life goes more smoothly and in sync when you are in tune with this flow. Think about how water flows down a river it doesn't try to change its direction. It adapts to its surroundings and easily gets around obstacles. In order to be in sync with the flow of the world, you have to accept the way things are going instead of fighting them. You might ask, though, if this doesn't mean giving up power. Not in the least. It means being aware that you are a part of something bigger. You can't change the world, but you can change how you react to it. It's about figuring out where you fit within this global dance and going with it. Put it this way, if you swim against the flow, you'll get tired quickly and not get very far. You will save energy and get where you're going faster if you swim with the stream though. In life, it's the same. Things will come to you more easily and quickly when you get in tune with the flow of the world. Chapter 20 being thankful and appreciative. In order to be in sync with the flow of the universe, it's also important to practice gratitude and respect, as these feelings can have a big impact on your inner state and, by extension, your experiences in the world. Gratitude and respect aren't just good feelings, they can change things for the better. You are open to the wealth that the universe has to offer when you are grateful. As chances, connections, or ideas that you might have missed otherwise, this openness can show itself. In contrast, gratitude is recognizing the good things in your life. Focusing on what's already there instead of what's missing can help you feel like you're happy. It's important to note that showing thanks and thankfulness doesn't mean denying or ignoring the problems in life. Instead, it's about picking your point of view. You're not ignoring your problems, 
you're just noticing the good things that are happening along with the bad. This shift in viewpoint can have a huge effect on your emotions, which in turn can change what you feel in the outside world. When you show thanks and appreciation, you match your inner state with happiness and plenty. This connection shows up as good things happening in your life, reflecting without. The idea behind this comes from the saying, as within, so without, which means that your outside world shows what's going on inside you. Giving thanks and appreciating what you have is a strong way to create an inner state that matches the world you want. This is a real-life example of the as-within, so-without concept we talked about earlier. It helps you get in tune with the flow of the universe and opens the door to good changes. Chapter 21. Putting the as-within, so-without rule to use in everyday life. To grow and change as a person, you need to know how to use the as within, so without concept in your daily life. This concept says that what you see outside of you is a mirror of how you feel inside. If you hold on to negative thoughts and feelings, they will show up in your real life. On the other hand, if you develop positivity within, your outside situations will reflect that. How can you use this idea then? First, pay attention to your thoughts. Do they tend to be good or negative? You'll know what's going on within you thanks to this. Don't worry if you feel like negative is taking over. It's just a sign that you need to pay attention to and fix some issues within yourself. Next, make the choice to change your thoughts. When you notice that you are having a bad thought, change it to a good one. This doesn't mean avoiding your problems. It means seeing them in a way that makes you feel better about them. Mindfulness practices can also be helpful. You are more likely to catch and change bad thoughts before they get out of hand if you stay present and aware. This means being aware of your feelings without judging them. Lastly, make the surroundings good. Surround yourself with positive people and do things that make you happy. Take note that as within, so without is not about being perfect but about making progress. It's a journey to learn about and change yourself. Putting this concept into practice takes time and practice, but as you keep at it, you will see changes in the outside world. This is the power of as within, so without. It helps you make your life reflect your best self. Remember that what you give is what you will get. You will harvest a life full of wealth and joy if you sow seeds of positivity and thanks within. Using as within, so without, doesn't just mean changing the way you think. It means changing your whole life. It's a deep, all-encompassing philosophy that connects you to the flow of the world, pushes you to go deeper, and eventually directs you to your full potential. Thanks for reading or listening to Audiobooks Empowerment.